welcome. Thank you for joining us on this edition of News 2. I'm Sandra Guman Singh. In our top story, the Juana Flui Hospital gained much needed supplies today from a donation from Project Revive USVI. The mission of the group, they state, is to empower the residents of the United States Virgin Islands with the skills and knowledge as well as awareness necessary to help in the effort of making the territory a better place for all. News 2's Stephanie Brown reports. Over 18,000 pounds of medical supplies were donated to the Juan F. Louis Hospital today. Items range from examination gloves to trash oil tubes, resuscitation kits, and oxygen regulators. Through a relief fund group entitled Revive USVI, founded by John Dima, a Virgin Islands raised lawyer residing in New York, funding was raised to purchase the supplies. Um, and we have facilitated, along with one of our partners, Revive. Um, they're also um, a, doing an incredible job in terms of hurricane recovery and relief. Um, and we paid for the shipment in um, conjunction with Revive to get the goods here. The Juan F. Louis Hospital has experienced challenges with its sewage drainage system, which $3 million was appropriated for repairs. And during Hurricane Maria, the hospital's roof was compromised. As you all may have heard in the news, the hospital was badly damaged and is in the process of being completely condemned uh, because it's beyond repair. And uh, at the same time, our operations have been affected. Our uh, census, our daily census, has decreased significantly. We've had to airlift many people off island. As a result, our income has dropped significantly, making it very difficult for us to buy medical supplies and medications. And this came really at a very critical point. The Elan Insurance Group, which procured the medical supplies, informed that more aid will be provided. I want to thank the donors. We have an additional $1.8 million of medicine that we're going to be distributing over the next few days right here in St. Croix, St. Thomas, getting to the highest need people. For News 2, I'm Stephanie Shalana Brown. Juan's Rubin, who is the newly appointed chief executive officer of the Juana Flui Hospital, stated that she was extremely grateful for the outpouring of support the hospital has received in light of Hurricane uh, Maria and Irma. And the donation of medical supplies will go a long way, they say, in assisting the hospital in providing quality health care for patients. Meanwhile, it was moving day on Saturday after members of the Wallowee Hospital began the transition of several of its medical units to the Virgin Islands Cardiac Center. Now, officials say as a result of the passing of the hurricanes, it will be necessary for Wallowee Flui to move to the Western Shelter Systems later this year. In preparation for this move, the Progressive Care Unit, Medical Unit, and Medical Surgical Units were relocated to the VICC this past weekend. Now, you can expect some changes. Visiting hours for the PCU Medical and Med Surge Units will be from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m., and the number of family support visitors within patient rooms will be limited. All of one of Louis' other services, including the emergency department, remain in their existing locations. After Hurricanes Irma and Maria, many residents have complained about mold in stores and uh, their living quarters. Now, mold growth is encouraged by warm and humid conditions and will grow and become a problem where there is water damage, high humidity, or dampness. Exposure to mold can cause symptoms such as nasal stuffiness, eye irritation, um, wheezing, and more. Now, some people, such as those with serious allergies to molds may have more severe reactions. The governor addressed concerns on mold issues in households and in retail stores during his recent press briefing. Here's what he had to say. If anybody is selling uh, items that appear to be um, spoiled, mold, infested, even if they say pay up 10 cents for it, no, you shouldn't buy it. And if you are coming across that in a business, I would ask you to call the Department of Licensing and Consumer Affairs, the Consumer Protection Division, and advise them and file a complaint so that an appropriate inspection can be done. Okay. If you're working in an, in an environment, and I don't want to, I'm not putting the government down on anyone, but if you're working in an environment that you feel is really unsafe or unhealthy, um, and if you don't want to put your job in jeopardy, you should find a way and call the OSHA division of the Department of Labor, and they'll look into that as well. If it's not habitable, you really want to find some alternative place to rent and live. But you don't want to stay in an inhabitable place 
and then say, this is where you should charge me because of the condition of the property, or you should let me live here for free. Because the government can't it really enforce that, and you have a contract. If, if, you, if you deem that it's not fit, then really try to make arrangements to relocate from that location. If, if it's a, like one of the mass communities, and you let us know, we will go in and um, deal with the private companies, and they have to make sure that people are in habitable conditions, and we have gone to some, and have to tell folks, you have to, you, have to, you can't stay there. That's just not um, some place that you should live when you get sick and, and what have you. But you can let us know, and we'll look at it from a case-by-case -case side. But if you accept that the place is inhabitable, don't stay and then argue with the landlord that they shouldn't charge you rent. Now, central government and essential services such as hospitals, the Virgin Islands Port Authority, and the Virgin Islands Water and Power Authority will see some funding coming their way. Governor Mapp also shared at that press conference that the territory is expected to receive an estimated $800 million from the $4.9 billion approved for emergency operating loans for the USVI and Puerto Rico, which is part of the $36.5 billion Supplemental Disaster Recovery Spending Bill that was approved by U.S. Congress. He said the first drawdown would take place in the next 10 to 15 days. Turning to some crime news, police continue to investigate. They say on Friday, October 27, around 9.26 a.m., a call came from a family member reporting that Javert Williams went missing at Shoy Beach in St. Croix. And according to the report, information received from the caller and Javert, that uh, Javert Williams was working carpentry in a state shoy and that Javier Williams walked to the shoreline to refresh himself and that's when the rip current took him. On Sunday, October 29 at approximately 11.44 a.m., the body of Mr. Williams washed up to shore and was found by his employer and a family member. Williams, 24 years of age, he was identified at approximately 12.30 uh, p.m. by next of kin. VIPD and DPNR officers removed his body and transported the victim by boat to the Gallows Bay dock where the body was turned over to the staff of the medical examiner's office. Well, September is designated as Domestic Violence Awareness Month and since Hurricanes Irma and Maria, there has been a number of reported domestic violence disputes and Governor Mapp had made mention to the three incidences out of many during his recovery news briefing, even mentioning to residents to get out of abusive relationships and to seek help. Now, both uh, due to both Category 5 hurricanes, many planned activities to bring some uh, awareness to the cause that uh, were postponed. However, um, you know, they actually did pay attention to the awareness. But one thing that was postponed included the NEF conference that takes place on both St. Croix and St. Thomas. Here's more. Domestic Violence Awareness Month is observed yearly since 1981 in September. The campaign focuses on connecting agencies and people that work together to end violence, celebrate those who have survived, as well as mourn those who have died. Emanuela Perez Casias lost her best friend in a domestic violence dispute in 2009. And over the past three years, through her organization, Lady Leaders, alongside the Virgin Islands Domestic Violence and Sexual Assault Council, female high school students were provided enrichment courses to reinforce the importance of self-value and to pinpoint negative attributes in relationships. Well, you know, domestic violence is like any other violence. It is always spearheaded when you are in situations where you feel more threatened or less safe and it's just the same effects. I believe that our, um, in the Virgin Islands, even though they say that we are doing a lot of awareness. I don't think we do enough of prevention. We don't do enough around domestic violence in regards to addressing these issues at younger stages in the dating process or younger stages in the relationship process. Since the impact of two Category 5 hurricanes hitting the territory, some residents have been dealing with uncomfortable home situation. VIDV SAC has been working to provide assistance to those in need. We were able to put out PSAs talking about things that can be done in terms of going to the Department of Human Services if you feel that you need to talk to someone or get assistance. Go to the Women's Coalition because they're open and they have counselors that can also assist individuals along with family members. For News 2, 
I'm Stephanie Shalana Brown. The Virgin Islands Domestic Violence and Sexual Assault Council further informed that their services are available on St. Croix. They are operating at the St. Croix Foundation Building in Christiansted. The NEF conference will occur in February of next year. Be sure to comment too. We will keep you updated. Keeping our eye on the economy, let's take a look at the stock market watch at the New York Stock Exchange. According to the numbers, we can see the Dow up 28, NASDAQ also 28, S&P 500 up 2. Coming up on News 2, we have much more straight ahead, an update on the uh, blue roof as uh, we speak to our resident to get an update and much more that's coming up next. Welcome back. Here's an update. Claire Roker's home, her home roof was badly damaged from Hurricane Maria and she sought assistance from the Blue Roof program. Initially, she purchased her own beams to be qualified for the Blue Roof program, which at the time only covered roof with less than 50% structural damage. Governor Mapp was able to roll out new qualifications with the assistance of the Army Corps of Engineers to cover roofs with more than 50% structural damage. However, even through those measures, Claire still had a major part of her roof open to the elements because her porch and living room were one of the same and she was informed that her porch did not qualify. Well, after seeing her story on News 2, the Army Corps of Engineers reached out to Claire, and she expressed some joy, even though the contractors have not gotten back to our houses yet. Here's more. I was because of the damage that was being done inside the house, because right now, the rooms where uh, the uh, damage was done is unlivable. I'm not going to be able to live back in that house unless it's totally clean or either the house is being condemned. Well, the inspector was Mr. Todd Tugwell, and he was the one that saw um, the damage, and he said that they would send a representative to do the finished job, which is to cover the porch. Now, Governor Mapp is seeking options to provide temporary housing for affected residents. Now, the Blue Roof program, which we shared, provides roofing tarpaulins, continues to be rolled out across the territory. They say approximately 2,200 roofs installed to date. And Governor Mapp said in support of recovery efforts, another disaster recovery center will be opened on St. Thomas later this week. There are currently 179 staff working at DRCs. And just a reminder, the deadline to sign up is Friday, November 3rd for the Blue Roof. Well, as recovery efforts continue, WAPA advises residents that it is necessary to shut off the standby generators when line crews are in your neighborhood restoring electrical service. A standby generator, they say, has the potential to backfeed electricity. Here's John Greer with the latest on the restoration efforts. John? On St. Thomas Monday, primary circuits along with residential and business customers were energized on portions of feeder 6A. Those areas include Clearview Apartments along the Crown Mountain Road to Estate Pearl and from the University's Sports and Fitness Center to the Massac Nursing Home in Estate Hope. Primary circuits on feeders 7A and 8A from the Harley Power Plant and Niski Center will be energized by the middle of this week. Service to the Grand View community on Dono Road has been restored, as well as portions of New Tutu, Nada, and a significant portion of Bovoni. On St. John, crews reconstructed primary circuits on feeders 7E and 9E Monday, and customers in the Pine Peace area of the island had electrical service restored. Crews are also working to re-energize the Keneal Bay and Western resorts by the middle of this week. On St. Croix, additional poles and lines installed on feeder 4A, while work continued on feeder 5A from Queen's Quarters to Cyan Farm. The primary lines, which will serve the modular units at the Wanaflowee Hospital, were energized, as was the Sunny Acres area. On the western end of St. Croix, more primary circuits were built from the police station towards the post office, as well as in Hannah's Rest and in Estate Wim. Additional portions of feeders 6A and 6B will be energized this week, the Gallows Bay area within two weeks. 
Work is also ongoing this week on feeders 2A and 9B on St. Croix. Reconstruction and restoration crews will work in the following areas on Tuesday. On St. John, on the roadway near the Department of Public Works and along the roads leading to the Keneal Bay and Weston Resorts. On St. Thomas, on Crown Mountain, in Estate Hope, the roadway in front of the Randolph Harley Power Plant, on Dono Road intersection toward Windberg, the Dono Bypass Road, and Tabor and Harmony Road towards Mandau. On St. Croix, crews will work in Queens Quarters, Downtown, Golden Rock, Estate Richmond, Barron Spot, Estates Wim and Hannah's Rest, as well as Downtown Frederickstead and on North Shore Road. Motorists across the three islands are urged to follow the directions of flag persons, military police officers, and VIPD officers who are all assisting with traffic control in the WAPA work areas. Thank you for that update, John. Well, Adla Donestarg said he was deeply saddened by the level of devastation personally and uh, that he witnessed and experienced as well. The safety and well-being of all Virgin Islanders, he says, should be of utmost importance. He said, I shall and will do my part during our recovery. And so he has been doing just that. His team has been going door to door, handing out care packages and hearing from residents to uh, see how they can help. Here's more. The Friends of AFD Inc. Uh, as we reached out into the community and addressed some of the pressing problems that exist with people but doing what you call a self-help program. Uh, it was in fact gratifying uh, just in seeing how the elated people were that there were in fact a group coming out into the community, reaching into the community, providing care packages and just encouraging Virgin Islanders everywhere. But I think there's one thing that stood out more than anything else and that is self-help. You know, Virgin Islanders came out in numbers to really help themselves. And I think that speaks volumes about the character of Virgin Islanders, that they're resilient, that they're strong, and they're willing to address or confront the pressing problems that face them. I think it's very encouraging that uh, many Virgin Islanders, in the wake of the hurricane, immediately after the, the hurricane Irma and Hurricane Maria, that you saw Virgin Islanders there on the roads, clearing roadways and participating in any way that they can and helping their fellow Virgin Islanders in cleaning up their respective uh, properties. And I think that um, we, sh we have a lot to be proud of. And I think that Virgin Islanders have actually defined who they are. And that's why the term has uh, flown so high and so long and so persistent that VI is strong, Virgin Islanders are strong, that we deserve the right as American citizens under the Constitution of the United States to be treated equally, that the dispensation, the distribution of any resources, that it is in fact consistent with other places per capita. And uh, that's what this film is intended to do, to convey a message to America that although we might be considered the forgotten colony, we are in fact Virgin Islanders strong. And we'll share more about that uh, film that he's talking about. Now I want to show just how much you care about your community. Well, don't just say it, prove it. Roll up the sleeve and join the effort called the Rock City Clean Streets. That's a downtown cleanup that's coming up on Saturday, November 4th. You can meet up at the MBW Bakery, and that starts at uh, 8 a.m. until the streets are clean. Now, they say lunch will be provided by the bakery for all volunteers. You can contact Christina Edwards at the, uh, of the Coastal Zone Management of DPNR for more information, 340-998-4820. Also under DPNR, the Division of Fish and Wildlife, they are looking for the commercial and charter fishing industry workers. The staff would like to meet with you to record your damages and losses following Hurricanes Irma and Maria. They said to bring as much information as possible, such as damages sustained. Now, this is a schedule right there. They are meeting on uh, Mondays in Hull Bay. The next dates coming up are November 6th and 13th from 10 a.m. to 2. Frenchtown on Wednesdays, November 8th, November 15th from 9 a.m. to 12. Also, Saturdays in Frenchtown, November 4th and 18th from 2 to 5 p.m. The DFW office in Red Hook, Fridays, November 3rd, November 10th, November 17th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Cruise Bay, St. John, Thursday, November 2nd and Tuesday, November 7th from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. 
On St. Croix, it's at the DFW office Mondays and Fridays, November 3rd, 6th, 10th, and 13th, as well as the 17th. That's from 12 to 4, and also at the DPNR Enforcement Office, Wednesday, November 8th and 15th, from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Stick around, your news to AccuWeather forecast is coming up next. Good evening. Hopefully everybody had a fantastic day out there today. We certainly do have some great weather. Taking a look at the satellite, there's really not much going on at all. Puerto Rico, we could see a couple of showers, some storms in the evening uh, because of all that daytime heating. Other than that, staying pretty pleasant. Looking forward, we don't really see much coming in our direction either. So it's going to stay like this through at least the end of the week. Toward the weekend, we could see maybe a couple of showers moving across the island. So for tonight, 77 degrees, nice and clear, gorgeous conditions. If you'd like to take a stroll on the beach. Tomorrow in St. John, 86, mostly sunny, very nice conditions. St. Thomas, 86, and also in St. Croix, 88 degrees, mostly sunny, which is great weather. If you are still rebuilding from some of those hurricanes, we'll have some good weather for that. The Atlantic side, we do not have any kind of marine advisories to tell you about. The waves are two to four feet. The winds are coming out the east from 10 to 15 knots. The Caribbean side waves 2 to 4 feet. Winds out of the northeast from 10 to 15 knots. And again, we don't have any advisories. So if you're fishing or snorkeling, something along those lines, you should have some pretty good weather for it. Wednesday through Friday, again, mostly sunny and gorgeous. Temperatures at 85. Saturday, we could see a stray shower in places. Very brief. Still warm at 85. And then on Sunday, that's when a shower or two uh, should be expected across the islands with the temperature of 86 degrees. Back to you. Not too bad. Thank you for that. Nikia Christopher of Grapevine Summer Learning Academy shares his typical VI weather right there. Sunshine, clouds, and a palm tree swaying in the wind, Nikia. Thank you for that. Send us your news weather picture too. News too via 4611-22 Park, Suite 300, St. Thomas Virgin Islands, 00802. And that is all for this edition of News 2. We'd like to thank you for joining us for all the latest. I'm Sandra Guman saying have a wonderful evening. We'll see you next time.